Thanks for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, and check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff. Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video and the next, we're going to be discussing liver and pancreatic enzyme levels. In this video specifically, we'll just be focusing on the liver and the biliary system. We're going to see that associated with the liver and the biliary system, we're going to have two major enzymes each that are measured in the blood. But before we get into all this, let's answer one very important question. Why would these enzymes that we're about to talk about that are normally present in the cells of these tissues, why would they be found elevated in the blood specifically? Well, if you think about the individual cells, let's say, of the liver, and those cells normally contain these enzymes, well, if those cells become damaged, you could think of those cells as kind of ripping open, and the contents of those cells leak into the blood. And so, if those enzymes leak into the blood, they'll be detected in these blood tests. And so, if they're elevated, that indicates that a particular tissue is damaged. Okay, so normally they're only present at low levels in the blood, but if they become elevated, it indicates that some tissue has become damaged. So let's talk about first the two major liver enzymes, and those are ALT and AST. Now before we get into this, let's have a basic understanding of what these enzymes are. The first enzyme here is ALT, or alanine transaminase, sometimes called alanine aminotransferase. Those are the same thing. What this enzyme does is it takes this amino acid, L-alanine, and it effectively just swaps out this amine group, this NH2, for a double bond between carbon and oxygen. So it takes the amine, swaps it out with a carbonyl functional group. And when it does this reaction, the product is pyruvate. Now, in this direction from left to right, it uses alpha-ketoglutarate to perform this swap. And so along with pyruvate, you also get out glutamate. Also understand that this reaction is freely reversible, even though I've only shown it drawn to the right. The second enzyme down here is very similar, AST, aspartate transaminase, sometimes called aspartate aminotransferase. It is analogous to this enzyme up here, except it catalyzes the reaction on aspartate. So here you have aspartate, it's got this amine group, and it uses alpha-ketoglutarate to essentially swap out this amine for a double bond between carbon and oxygen. That's your carbonyl. And so the products are going to be minorly uh, glutamate, and the major product is oxaloacetate. So coming back to this, the liver contains these two enzymes, ALT and AST. So ALT is very, very, very specific to the liver, meaning that this enzyme is found predominantly in the liver whereas AST is not specific to the liver. It is contained in the liver, but it's also contained in skeletal muscle, the heart, so cardiac muscle, the kidneys, brain, and red blood cells. So what does this mean? Well, if you have a liver problem, you're going to expect both ALT and AST to be elevated. Okay? Again, both of these enzymes are found in the liver, especially this ALT. It's very specific to the liver. So if ALT is elevated along with AST, you have a liver problem. So then what would it mean if only aspartate transaminase, AST, was elevated? Well, remember, AST is not specific to the liver. It is contained there, but it's also contained in these other tissues shown here. So if only AST is elevated, this actually indicates a problem elsewhere outside of the liver, so an extra hepatic problem. If you had truly a liver problem, you would also see ALT elevated, but because it's only AST, the problem is outside of the liver most likely. So it could be in any one of these places, muscle, heart, kidney, brain, red blood cells. And so if only AST is elevated, what you probably want to do is look in more detail at the patient presentation. You want to run additional lab tests, look in more detail at the other lab values to kind of tease out which other system here is the problem. So now let's take a look at the biliary system. This involves the gallbladder, the bile duct, and so on and so forth. Like the liver up here, there are two major enzymes associated with it. We have GGT, which is gamma glutamyl transferase. You can already see that this one is the one that's more specific to the biliary system. And then we have ALP, which is alkaline phosphatase. We'll come back to those in a minute, but let's understand what these enzymes actually do. 
Now, gamma glutamyl transferase, sometimes called gamma glutamyl transpeptidase, or GGT, the major function of this enzyme is to perform this reversible reaction right here. So in this direction, we have this tripeptide right here called glutathione. Glutathione is a tripeptide composed of three amino acids. Over here on the right is glycine. In the middle is cysteine, because you can tell because of that SH functional group. And then over here we have glutamate, except the glutamate is actually bound to this nitrogen of cysteine by the gamma carboxyl group, which is of the R group, not the alpha carboxyl. So that's glutathione. And what this enzyme does is it basically transfers this gamma glutamyl group over here on the left side onto some amino acid. This can actually be multiple amino acids. We're going to assume here it's L-alanine, that one is very common. And so the enzyme essentially splits this bond right here where the red line is, and everything to the left of it gets transferred onto L-alanine. And so what you see over here is that particular product. This is gamma glutamyl alanine. So over here on the right side of the molecule, this is alanine, and then you can see that you have this gamma glutamyl group over here. Again, the nitrogen of alanine is bound to the gamma carboxyl, or the R group carboxyl of glutamate. And then the remainder of this molecule is cystineal glycine. Okay, that's what's on the right side of this red line. So that's GGT, gamma glutamyl transferase. Alkaline phosphatase, or ALP, there's a lot of these enzymes. They have fairly broad specificity. Basically what they do is they just take compounds that have phosphates on them, in particular uh, carbon compounds with phosphates, and they just split off the phosphate because they are a phosphatase. They're named alkaline because they tend to be more active at higher pHs. Okay, so in this particular reaction, this is one example, we have phosphobenzene. It's just going to split this bond right here in a hydrolytic mechanism. And so phosphate comes off. It uses water to do the reaction, and we're just left with hydroxybenzene. Now, this is not the only reaction. They can do lots of reactions where they hydrolyze phosphates off of different compounds. Okay? But that's GGT and ALP. Now, again, we have a very similar setup to what we had for the liver enzymes. We have one that's very specific to the biliary system. That's GGT. Okay, so GGT, gamma glutamyl transferase, is mainly found in the biliary system, in particular the bile ducts and the gallbladder. Whereas ALP, this is found in the biliary system, but it's also found in bone, in placenta, in the kidneys, in the GI tract. Okay, so this one is not as specific. So now we can say, what happens if both of these enzymes are elevated? Well, if both GGT and ALP are elevated, then it's going to indicate a biliary problem, um, especially because of that GGT. Remember, that's very specific to the biliary system. So if you have both of these enzymes elevated in the blood, it's a biliary problem, and you might start to suspect the bile duct having a problem. Okay. Now, what would happen if only ALP is elevated? Well, again, ALP is not specific to the biliary system. It is found there, but it's also found in the bone, the placenta, the kidney, and the GI tract. So if only ALP is elevated, the problem is outside of the biliary system. And you may start to suspect bone or placenta or any of these. And again, for that, you want to look at the patient presentation, run additional lab tests, look in more detail at the existing lab values to kind of tease out which one of these that you might have. But again, if only ALP is elevated, it indicates a problem elsewhere, because if the problem was in the biliary system, you would certainly have GGT elevated. And then again, if neither is elevated, well, then you don't have a problem. So hopefully this video gave you some good information on the liver and the biliary enzymes. In the next video, we're going to look at the pancreatic enzymes, lipase and amylase. So join us then in that video. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.